Hello, my friends and fellow gaming gurus. Welcome to your seat at the table. This is Rick the Fat Man. And while I understand and know that this particular book is not part of the uh, West End Games version of Star Wars, this is from a later version. I think Wizards of the Coast, maybe. Is that what that says? It says something on there. I can't uh, be. What does that say on there? This is Lucasfilm. So this this is a part of the D20 system. Yeah, Wizards of the Coast. Uh, I was able to pick it up. It's pre-owned, what it says here, at the local game store called JCD and Hobby. It's actually in very good shape. It looks near new. Only paid $14.99 for it. Uh, originally a $30 book, so I paid half price for it. And I couldn't pass up on it because it's just one more tool for my Star Wars game universe to add in. And it's called... Uh, the role-playing game, The Hero's Guide, right? And it would be easily adaptable to play in uh, the uh, West End games, the Wegs, Wedge, Wig, Wig, however you want to call it, uh, version. So we got character creation, vital reminder, and rule zero. The vital... Fundamental rule of character creation in role playing games is to check with your game master. Your GM may have special house rules or campaign standards that vary from the rules presented in the, in the game. You may disallow some source books or even some species or classes. Signing ability score. Min maxing. This was the first time I have uh, a game supplement of any sort for any of the fan, any game systems I got that actually covers the concept of minimum maxing. And if you're not familiar with it, do your homework. Uh, choosing dramatic hooks, etc., etc. Mostly stuff for entry level here. And I've read through this a couple of times now. I've been uh, a good when I'm having my morning constitutionals. I have a little book, little book caddy next to the facility, and it lets me pre pre use things while I'm you know in a meditative physical state. The character archetypes: the demagogue, the imperial officer. Information Broker, Jedi Wanderer. See, now this is a good concept here. And we had some variants of homebrew stuff back in the day when, we, when I was using uh, the West End game version. Because one of the things that I always had a problem with is if you have a Jedi of any sort in your gaming group, and then you mix it with other, other character types. In general, the character... There's Frankie. She just likes to get up and get in the way. Uh, the, gen the generally speaking, a single Jedi character surrounded by non-Jedi is the most the non-Jedi player characters are, are going to be supporting the Jedi because the Jedi, unless they're a novice, is going to clean the clock to most things and you know jump, leap, run, uh, do things and other stuff that nobody else can do. So having uh, the other side of that is having we only have one or two players, you know. Sometimes finding, okay, Frankie, we're not having you on the table. One more time, and you're out the door. So you were behaving yourself again for the last 15 minutes. And I let her up here. She climbs on the damned keyboard, or she'll pull on the wires and cause problems. And I've lost entire videos because of it. Yeah, yeah. You only kind of like your butt spank. I call her Spanky. Yes, I hear you. You just want attention. Come up here, sit next to me, right up here. And you be up here? No. You sit. You sat beside me for a while. It's a problem. She's young, so she has, you know, she's very short extension span. So having a, a Jedi Wanderer would be an excellent, you know, addition to a game situation or your gaming toolbox because uh, now you have an excuse for, or a template for having a character that's not attached to the to the Jedi Order directly or is operating more or less on their own without any major attachments. Outlaw Tech The Prowler The Scrounger an actual template for Scrounger now. The Shipjacker. Some of these have been redone in other systems and other source books as well. Spirit Adept, an alternate version of a Force Adept Urban Adept. Chapter 3, Skills and Defeats. Old Skills, New Tricks. Bluff. 
climb bluff sending a secret message you can use bluff to send and understand secret messages while seemingly speaking about other topic topics two bothers spies might suspect that their comm leak channels are being monitored and decide to pass along information about their mission while appearing to be discussing the price of grains from uh, agamar now using things outside the box climb computer use disguise craft gather information Escape artists, hide, intimidate, listen, move object, so on and so forth. Slide a hand. You can lift a purse and hide it in your person. Palm unattended, unattended object or perform some feat of adroitness with an object of no longer the larger than a hat or a loaf of bread. Drop, which is a Offshoot of sleight of hand. You can also use sleight of hand to place an object on someone without their knowledge or to release an item without somebody noticing. That's just putting a blaster on a table under a napkin or putting a sedative in somebody's drink. Right. New beats, agile re repost. Aristocrats honor, armor familiarity, artistic, blaster slinger, card shark, combat veteran, counselor's guidance. Contact Cosmopolitan Defensive Throw Diplomatic Community Gun Crew Chief Extra Lucky Lots of good stuff in here. Proved Overrun Quite a bit of stuff. Spellcaster as a force feat. Okay. Using model martial arts and some variety of different types and styles that can be found in the Star Wars universe. Wookiee special martial arts. As if they aren't already a powerhouse. Various lightsaber forms in their definition. Number four is prestige classes. The galaxy is full of people who excel in their chosen professions, push the element of their skills and abilities, and step up off the standard career path. They represent the elite of the galaxy among the best to be found in their fields. To reflect that degree of excellence, prestige classes grant special class abilities or special combinations of existing class abilities to characters who qualify. Chief Engineer, the Infiltrator, the Loyal Protector, Martial Arts Master, actually the Martial Arts Master of Wookiee Combat. Ugh. Master Duelist. I know a buddy of mine, it would just be a static to play a Martial Art Master, a Wookiee Martial Artist Master. Outlaw uh, Slicer, we're talking about tearing arms off. Priest, kind of a gruesome picture there, right? Ugh. Sharpshooter. Treasure Hunter. Actions, Chapter Five. See, this is a new, a new thing. Sympathy. In Star Wars, the role-playing game. Some of the benefit of good relations and fame within the organization is represented by a character's reputation bonus. Positive reputation grants a bonus and skill checks following interaction with other characters. This bonus can also become a penalty in some situations. Sympathy, on the other hand, determines how strongly affiliated a character is with a given faction or organization. The higher the sympathy with a given faction, the more, the more trust and aid that faction affords. Sympathy and reputation are related in terms of effort. The following system explains how to award and supply and apply sympathy bonuses. Character gains a point of sympathy whenever she completes an adventure. Player can apply that point uh, of sympathy to any of the factions which she interests positive interacted positively during the adventure. Character sympathy score is a given faction can never exceed plus five. Each player needs to keep track of his sympathy bonus. Conflicting sympathies, losing sympathy, joining a faction. Some factions, the Antarian Rangers, known to be Jedi supporters. Black Sun Criminal L uh, Syndicate, or any criminal syndicate, I suppose, could be superimposed there. The Boffin Spy Net, Master Spy Prestige, 
Bounty Hunters Guild, Confederacy of Independent Systems, Corellian Sympathy or Security Force, Corporate Sector, Galactic Empire, Hot Criminal Syndicate, Crime Broker Prestige Class, The Mistral Shadow Guards, Noble Houses, Core World Nobles, Apes Cluster Nobles, Tabanique Sector Nobles, Noble House Sympathy, Lord of the Expanse Prestige Class, Peace Brigade, Appropriate Timing, Rebel Alliance, Snyder Fleet Systems, or any other major corporation, other factions, the Jedi. The Republic, the Sith, the Uzog Bomb, other time periods, Rise of the Empire, the New Republic, New Jedi Order, creating new factions, Chapter 6 Equipment, starting credits for higher level characters, character loans, getting along on payments, amount, penalties, communications devices, comm codes, helpful communications, what? Locator services, interstellar communications, new equipment, weapons, and military hardware. Which is nifty stuff, including cybernetics. And there are pros and cons. Combat, chapter 7, new combat actions. Aiming, brush and fire, pulling a blow, ion weapons. Versus speed action, lightsaber deflection, throwing lightsabers, clarifying flanking rules, center to center line, diagonal corners and flanking, the force, chapter 8, new force techniques, power force, large force, extend force, maximize force, split force, ultimate, alternate force traditions, the Baron Dosages. The Mataki Mataki Adept Prestige Clan Zizhan Shaw Creating New Force Traditions Force Spirits Chapter 9 on Droids, Droids as Henchmen Training remotes, the drawbacks, droid feats, droid prestige classes, espionage droid, prestige class, berserker droid, yeah, a lot of neat and interesting things in here. If you see this on your shelf somewhere and you get it cheap, don't have it already I recommend getting it I mean it's a matter of money of course like I said but I couldn't pass up the price it was pretty damn, pretty cheap and the condition was very good so there you have it till next time my friends game on